He may have written the Declaration of Independence and served as president, but this was Thomas Jefferson's lifelong obsession. It was, in effect, a work in progress until he died. He called Monticello his essay in architecture. There was the idea that this would be the place where he would be remembered. As long as he is working on this house, he's affirming his identity. For inspiration, Jefferson would open what he called his Bible, the works of the Italian architect Andrea Palladio. Jefferson loved the precise proportions of these forms, borrowed from the great temples of ancient Rome. Jefferson loved learning. He loved the classics. Palladio helped bring architecture back to classicism. So Jefferson designed a Virginia plantation house that looks more like a modest classical temple. It was a radical departure from the imposing Georgian homes of the time, which weren't so different from those back in England. Jefferson went so far as to design his three-story home to look like it's only one. Jefferson didn't like the pretense of building a vast, enormous building. If Jefferson were living today, he'd be crusading against McMansions. Jefferson's choice of location was also unusual. Most plantations were built along rivers, the highways of their day. Location, 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 as they say. Instead, Monticello sits on a hilltop. A lovely setting, but otherwise... This was a stupid place to build. Where's the water going to come from? Think of the expense. You think this thing was born level? It takes a lot of slave labor to move the earth. To level off this mountain. The location allowed Jefferson to hide unseemly aspects of his plantation from sight. The kitchen, laundry, and stables are all partially buried on either side. And the slave quarters were placed downhill on Mulberry Row. People saw slaves. Of course, they were integral to the service of Jefferson's family, even though their presence was discreet. Kind of museum. Or... Jefferson's guests would be enlightened as they waited for their host in his entrance hall. In the 18th century, you would have called a place like this a cabinet of curiosities. This would be something that ordinarily would be reserved for fellow aristocrats who would show each other their trophies. But Jefferson wanted to teach. And even if you weren't invited, you would get to spend some time here. Those of us allowed to go further... You probably would have been with a good letter of introduction. ...discovered a series of social spaces designed for our entertainment and enlightenment. Instead of square rooms with dark corners, Jefferson preferred octagonal rooms. These were places where Jefferson was like the light of the Enlightenment, shining into the dark corners. People would raise the subject and Jefferson would hold forth. And if conversation flagged, which didn't happen often here, you could look at the walls. You'd have things to talk about. These are all, as they used to call them, conversation pieces. For Jefferson, there was a educational value to everything here. But few guests were allowed a glimpse beyond the parlor doors. This was Jefferson's sacred sanctuary. Now, my initial reaction to that is, Jefferson, you're so self-indulgent. Come on, man. But in fact, what he's trying to do is to create the ideal space within which he can do the kind of thinking he does, the kind of writing he does. Everybody else is stuffed upstairs in relatively tiny rooms, but Jefferson is provided for his own comfort. And comfort was kind of a new idea? Comfort is a very new idea in the 18th century. Nobody expected to be comfortable. In fact, the concept really didn't exist. With Monticello, the man who drew up America's founding documents was giving us a blueprint for domestic architecture, that a house should be built for the comfort of its creator and the entertainment of his guests, who would be enlightened with fine art, big ideas, and great architecture. Jefferson was convinced that when people came and saw the things they saw and learned the things they learned, they would be better off for it. You might say he's exploiting his charisma 
as a way to contribute to the progressive civilization of Virginians and Americans.